Hello everyone, my name is Skyler, and today we are going to go over an SBOM tool called Scan by Shift Left Security. This is an open source security tool that scans projects locally and supports many different languages. As for the environment that I'm running it on, I am running it on my Windows 10 desktop. It requires Docker to run, which is why I have this up. If you do not already have this installed, I would recommend looking at their documentation to see how it installs, and you can just look up Docker Desktop. So getting started, their documentation is pretty straightforward. They have one line commands that scan a project of your choice for Linux and win Windows. They also provide the changed command for each Windows terminal, including the command prompt, PowerShell, WSL bash, and Git bash. I'm going to be demonstrating the PowerShell command. So the first thing we need to do is type it up. So to start, you type docker run, the option dash rm, which is just a cleanup flag that removes the Docker container as it exits. The dash E option, which sets the environment variables. We're gonna be setting two here today. So the first one is work space. And then we're setting that equal to dollar sign PWD. Oops, I messed up a quote there. And then we're going to set a, another environment variable. This one is github underscore token. And we're setting that to just the environment github token. Okay. And then dash V. And then we're doing the PWD option again. Um, the dash V option links the current directory to the containers app cached directory. So it's basically just mounting the current directory to the container. And that's the same thing that's happening over here. This is just print working directory. Um, in command prompt, it's slightly different, um, but it's just setting that equal to the workspace environment variable. And then finally it calls shift left scan and then the scan command. So what to take away from this? You obviously need Docker to run it. Um, and then it is going to scan the current directory. So you must be in the directory that you're trying to scan. So if we run this command, I had a little bit of a mix up here. I forgot the double dash and now it should run. There we go. The scan completed, and as you can see, the tool Secret Audits found 51 high-risk vulnerabilities, while the Python Source Analyzer found none. So if we look in the current directory, we can see that there is a new folder that was created called Reports. So if we head in there, we see uh, quite a bit of stuff. Um, the first file, we can just open a notepad. Um, this looks like just a bunch of hash values. Um, when we go further in depth, we can see that these are the hash values of all the vulnerable components that scan found. The next four files all have pretty much the same information, um, just slightly different. The first two are HTML files that contain the report. Um, so if we bring this over, we can see there is an executive summary um, that shows the different severity levels. If there was anything else, there would be bar graphs here as well. Um, and then it lists all the vulnerabilities. So for this program in particular, all the vulnerabilities really boil down to two specific ones. So if we go to all issues here, we can see that there might be credentials in plain text. So it gives you the rule, which is high entropy, the source location, and then message. So what it thinks is the issue, um, and then what's happening. So if we click on this, it looks like a certificate. So this basically is just saying that the root certificate is not trusted. This is an inherently a vulnerability. Um, if you're using it for testing purposes, obviously if you're making a website or something that requires a root certificate it needs to be trusted 
and that's something you would want to look at if you were trying to push to production and should have a trustworthy root certificate. All of these are connected to that, except we start getting into dgserver.key instead of CRT. So this looks like another issue. So if we click on that report and it states here that there's credentials in plain text and it's listing the private key. So obviously this is not very secure. If you were to make something, you would want the private key to be encrypted. And this just gives you an overview of what the issue is. So if we keep scrolling down, it does not look like there's any extra vulnerabilities that aren't based off the private key or that certificate that, that we saw. So if we go back to the next report, we can open this and this one shows a little bit more information with less fun colors. As you can see here, the name Secret Audits found some interesting information. The has the name. The precision is very high, so it's very confident that it found something that is dangerous. And it has a description, which we didn't have before. We kind of had an overview where it was storing information in clear text, um, but it does add within a resource that might be accessible to another control sphere. And that says the exact same thing up here. It also gives you some more information on how it could be dangerous. So even if this information is encoded in a way that is not human readable, certain techniques could determine which encoding is being used and then decode that information. When creating software, you're going to have some vulnerabilities that you overlooked. This program will help you figure out what it is and why it would be an issue. Um, if we then scroll down a little bit, we should be able to get to the private key. We are beginning the private key here. Um, it looks like it has the same issue, so it is most likely just going off of the text that we saw at the top here. Since it applies to both things, there wouldn't be another section for it. So moving on, if we go to these two JSON files, so this is just the exact same information as the credit scan report. Um, and then the scan full report is the same information as this HTML file. So all these four are pretty much fully related. So the next one is for source Python report, which is the program that didn't find any issues. So if we look over at that, we can see that it's a pretty quick summary. There are no issues at all, so there's nothing to report on. And it says, based on this report, the application is certified as ready for development to test in production environments. You obviously want this executive summary. And when you have everything with that same summary, you know that the scan didn't find anything, and that is definitely a positive. Just like the first four files that are all related, these are the same style. So overall, the shiftless scan is pretty quick and obviously gives you some insight on what you could have missed when creating a program. I do think it's a it's a very good tool that you can use to try and find vulnerabilities in your systems before production. And thank you so much for watching. This has been LearnSBOM.com. Bye-bye. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here. And then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.